Welcome back. Yes, welcome. Um, we are at our third and final tranche of the day, health, wellness, and beauty. Um, and we have a real, real champion to kick this whole thing off. Indeed we do. Henry, who signed up for this class thinking he'll have two weeks at home and one week in person, oh. um, unfortunately, because of timing, had to do his final week at home. And Henry just found out that actually he might be able to come in on Monday. So that's good news and bad news. But we yeah. will make it up to you, Henry. Well, bad news Thank only you. because Henry isn't here today. But exactly. Henry, you know, we were so used to you being this disembodied head and <laughs> carrying <laughs> classroom and checking on whether you're all right and we dropped the laptop you were on yesterday and wanted to make sure you were okay and I'm great. I mean, you're part of the whole culture of this class as Thank you, you are now so we, we want you. you to present as you are now in fact Thank if you. we do that then we might have to have a virtual friend with us just yes. so like <laughs> yeah. for, as the new henry because we all have taken care of you like a tamaguchi yes like we feel like it's our <laughs> responsibility to make sure henry's okay Thank you. So that's a really long introduction to Henry, um, Hi but guys. without, oh, sorry, before I start that, I'd like to introduce our new judges. Oh, yes. I almost uh. went right past that. So Buck, Amy, thank you for joining us. Bamathy is here from the last session, so welcome back, Bamathy. And thank you for staying with us, Bamathy. Yeah. Um, Buck is, Buck Sleeper is an experienced designer at the global design, engineering, and innovation firm EPAM working broadly to understand the needs and behaviors of humans, identify disruptive opportunities for businesses and institutions, and forge alignment within organizations to drive real change and implementation. Buck is obsessed with crafting a future that is inclusive, sustainable, and optimistic. He is the head of experience consulting for retail at EPAM, drawing from his diverse background of projects in education, healthcare, financial services, civic design and connected devices to transform the future of shopping, eating and product experience. Welcome back. Buck, I should say welcome back. Yes, you were one of our first speakers and we're delighted to have you here for the capstone. Happy to yeah, be like here. A few Thanks. months ago, right? You were with us, right? That's what it feels like anyway. <laughs> All um, the way last year. Thanks for having next me. We have Amy. Amy is also was with us in the very, very beginning. Day, I think you, day one. Weren't they both? Oh, she was, yeah, day one and day the two. The breakout groups, Yes, Amy. that's right. Um, Amy's an executive residence here at Emerson, also the president of Optimum Revenue Consulting, where she works with firms to determine and implement enhancements on how they generate revenue. Um, she has over 30 years of product, sales, and marketing experience in the business services, child care, and education services, higher ed, and technology industries. And for those of you who were not here for the previous session, mm -hmm. Bamathy uh, teaches, advises, and writes about the intersectionality of creative economies, arts and culture, and copyright law. Bamathy is an affiliate faculty in the Business of Creative Enterprise program at Emerson. She, she teaches courses on intellectual property law and creativity, business fundamentals, creative economy, creative collaboration and leadership, and cultural appropriation. And she calls it exactly like it is. Yes, she does. Um, <laughs> So now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Henry. Hi guys, I'm just gonna share my screen. Please let me know if there's any issues with that. Um, share sound. How is that? Can everyone see that? Yep. Perfect, okay. So my name is Henry Vox. I'm a freshman BCE major. Um, and uh, here I am today to present you my project called Inner Strength. And I'm just gonna start it out with a video. My mom was always so proud of her hair, it would spend hours styling it, making sure it was perfect. When she was going out, you could smell the hairspray all throughout the hall. The day that she learned that her chemo would cause her to lose her hair, she was heartbroken. Her hair was something that had made her her. The more she lost, the more it hurt. Even though she was making jokes, saying that she was going to donate to the local birds' nests, I could tell that this was not easy. With inner strength, I wanted to create a product to bring out the woman she knows she is inside. I knew it was still there on the inside and it just needed to be brought back out. Inner Strength is a kit filled with beauty products to bring out the confidence that she deserves. It includes false eyelashes, a lash applicator, lash glue, an eyebrow pencil, and a booklet filled with positive affirmations. Our goal was to create a kit so that they did not have to find all these products individually. We wanted to make it simplistic for them because we know that they're going through so much already. My hope with this kit is that it gives people the strength that they have on the inside to the out with confidence. 
At our core, our goal is simplicity, convenience, and confidence. Now let's bring out that strength one step at a time. Thank you, <laughs> inner strength. Uh, bringing what's on the inside to the out. So first off, I wanna start with my go-to-market strategy. So my target slash buyer would be cancer patients because after all, my whole goal with this idea was to help them. Um, my value proposition was the simplicity of this product because I want to create a product that's for them. This isn't for me, this is a product to help cancer patients to make their day-to-day -day life as easy as it can be. Um, some of my marketing ideas is that I would be giving out free samples to chemo patients and let them know what works versus what doesn't. I wanna, I wanna learn and grow. I wanted to be able to develop the product to make it best for them. I would also be uh, hosting free events to give out beta products so I can also learn and grow and develop. So my business model would be a B2C and I would have my own website because I believe that this product is too specific or niche to, ho um, to have it at uh, large chains like Sephora or Ulta. So next we're on the projected timeline. It's actually gonna start this month where I'll be developing and fine tuning the product until April, where I start creating the monetization strategy. I will do that until uh, June, 2022, where I'll begin testing and um, production. And that will last for around a year until June of 2023. Then what I was talking about earlier with giving out samples to Chemo patients, I would do a soft launch to them and let them know what works and I would fix uh, that. Fix that. Um, for example, if the packaging is hard to open because the, uh, the chemo makes them weak, I wanna know that. And then I would have my official launch on my website of November, 2023, my budget. So my total right now is $8,360, but I'll be asking for 9,500 because uh, the production costs can change so widely, especially during COVID at such a crazy time. So 6,500 would go to production costs. 1500 would go to marketing slash advertising and the website is 360 and if you're confused about that running an e-commerce website is 30 dollars a month and so i'm asking for that uh for help on that for exactly 12 months um next we're on to the budget part two so next this is kind of just how i split up uh the allocation um or the budget how i allocated the budget um of 250 kits just because i think that would be a good place to start I go to the next and on to success. I believe with this product, I wouldn't see success from the amount of people that buy, but from positive reviews. After all, I want this product to make a change. I think that would, if someone told me that this product helped them, that's that's all the success I need. I don't, this isn't a product about the money for me. Um, but I guess on to the revenue. Um, so each cost, each kit costs $26 to make, and I would sell it for $58. And I believe that is a very good price considering a pair of eyelashes can range from anywhere from $20 to $30. So having three eyelash, uh, three pairs of eyelashes in a kit with additional items is a very good deal. And I would only have to sell 164 kits out of the 250 to make back all the money to give to my investor. And that would leaves me with around $5,000 to create more kits. Thank you so much for watching. That is my presentation. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Henry. Um, Buck, I'd love to start with you. Yeah, hi folks. Um, can you hear me all right? Okay, all right. Um, so first of all, Henry, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's been, it's fascinating to see where this has, has come from um, and, and how it's grown. I think, you know, one of the most powerful parts of this is your personal story. And I think, yeah. um, you know, the story that you shared with, with your mom, um, you know, you didn't, you hadn't mentioned that. I didn't know that part of the the story previously. And, um, and I think that's the kind of story that is really going to connect with people. So um, thanks for sharing that. Um, I think you've also had a lot of growth, uh, even in just the name you, I think you pitched Simplashity um, yeah. last time. We all start from somewhere. We all absolutely, and I think inner inner strength is a major improvement from that. Um, Thank you, and not the least of which is the fact that you are um, you're pitching uh, a superficial beauty kit, right? It goes on the outside, but what you're really selling here is strength and confidence, yes. um, and that that really comes through. Um, a couple a couple areas that I might look to push, um, mm -hmm. uh, maybe starting with like who your target market is. Um, okay. look, you know, at cancer patients, but also at providers. So at doctors who are caring for patients at caretakers, I see what you're saying. At family members. Okay. Um, and my concern, concern there is that cancer patients already have a lot on their, on their mind. Yeah. 
Um, for sure. And everyone else is just looking for something to help. So yeah, um, I think this could be a really great thing to, to do that. And then I wouldn't sell yourself short on working with companies like Sephora. Um, okay. You know, I think that this is the kind of thing that creates a lot of really positive buzz. They'll have the reach to help you scale. Um, okay. And they can be an incredible partner when it comes to understanding markets and manufacturing and, and your segmentations. So um, I think that, you know, in addition to the, the users that you've identified, um, look at people who you think might be too big or a competitive okay. set um, and consider them uh, more like partners. And okay. then the, the last thing I'll say is, I think for your next step, I would love to see you get into prototyping, actually prototype these kits, kick yeah. the tires on what it takes to make them. Um, for sure. Get them out in the world. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Buck. Thank you, Buck. Um, Amy, I would love to hear what you have to say. Hi, Henry. Nice to see you again. You as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, your passion is infectious and it's really wonderful to still see that coming out so strong in your, in your ideas and your product. You have a very defined market. I kind of jump on what Buck was saying. You, you know, you got, one of the problems with most startups is they go too broad, too fast. So by going mm -hmm. after a very specific target market, it also helps streamline your marketing. So that's, that's great. Um, the product testing, kind of what Buck was saying at the end there, is as soon as you think you have a viable kit or product, get it out there, get feedback. Okay. And then when you get a product kit that people are like, wow, this is fabulous, go, don't stop, okay. don't, don't keep don't. discussing it, just go. And also okay. what, you know, what Buck was saying, tie into the bigger players. They're probably looking for another way to get to this audience as well. So. Okay you know, asking them to participate with you, all they can say is no, but they also can say yes. So That's very know, true. go with the confidence and, you know, keep going with your passion. It, it's wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so thank much, you so much. Henry. Thank you. You're a trooper, really. Yes. Thank you. I thank you for it. hanging in there. Thank it's you.